So I just found out about this new thing called the Bolt add-on. So if you go to Preferences in Blender, you go to Bolt. It's called Bolt Factory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mess around with it for a second for like the first time. Add Mesh, and then you can have this option down here, Bolt. Sorry, now you guys can't see that. Add Mesh Bolt. And just like that, we have a bolt. And then there's actually a little drop down over here as well. Um, let me just move this. Um, and it looks like we have a lot of different options here. So we have the height of like the head of the bolt, which is awesome. Um, the flat distance, which I guess is like the actual like size as well, like the actual radius. Shank length, let's see. Oh, okay, so if you're gonna make like a, um, oh, what are they called, like lag bolt, like something you'd put like in a piece of furniture, maybe something like that. Okay, that makes sense. And then shank diameter. Okay, that I see like I don't think that's very realistic, but maybe something like that. I could I could see that being realistic. Oops. Uh be careful if you undo, it's gonna completely erase everything. So go ahead and add mesh bolt again. And I'm just gonna continue to mess around with these options here. It looks like the default is like three, I think. Alright, let's see. Thread length. Okay, so you can add more or less thread. This is really interesting. And this is actually, I didn't realize this is built in the blender, but this is awesome. You can adjust the major diameter. <laughs> so you can create an absolutely ridiculous looking thing like this. Or I could set it back to what it was before. Let's see, minor diameter. Okay, that makes sense. So that's like the actual like internal diameter there. Pitch. So I guess if you want to make something that's like more like a screw, like a deck screw, you can like lower the pitch and have it be, or sorry, you can raise the pitch and have it be more like that. And then if you want to have something that's more like a metric kind of screw, you would have something like that. And then of course, for the shank length, you probably wouldn't have anything for that as well. So you'd have something more like this. All right, let's see. Crescent percent, let's see. I'm not sure what that's doing, it's kind of hard. Oh, okay, it's kind of like the sharpness of those angles. That's interesting, okay. Root percent. These are so many different values here. That That's interesting because now you have more of like a metric feel to this. Okay, div count, I assume that's the subdivision. Yep, so that's like the actual accuracy. So I mean, honestly, it looks pretty good right here. But again, when you shade this smooth, I think it's gonna look fine. All right, here we go. There, There's actually different models. So if you go into bolt here, there's also nut. And then there's also bit type, Allen, Torx, Phillips. Oh wow, this is so cool. You can do a hex head, 12 point, whoa, cap. Okay, so this is like more like a metric type of screw now. This is so cool, how did I not know this existed? Um, let's see, dome, okay, so dome, that's like, I guess if you wanna have something that cannot be, like it can only be bolted on from the other side. Uh, let's see, pan, okay. I mean, look at all these options. I mean, these are all real options from real life. I've seen this type of screw before. I don't really see, I guess this is just for like countersinking if you want something to be like perfectly flush with an edge. Let's see, bit type, Phillips. Oh, look at that. And it just cuts it right in for us. That is so cool. And then when you change the bit type, you can also change the diameter of like the size of the screw itself. This is so awesome. I definitely will be using this for a future project. Let's see, uh, Torx. Okay, I've never seen that type of bit, but that's interesting. Phillips, of course, we went over that. Allen, Allen is like the classic Allen key, and this actually looks like a realistic bolt right now. Let's try, did I try all of them? Yeah, I did. Um, and then let's go ahead and, oh look, you have this option here too. Countersink for the head versus cap. So like that is like actually pretty realistic right there. And let's go ahead and try nut. Wow, this is awesome. So I'm assuming as long as you keep the same values with the nut and the bolt, they should fit around each other. It's hard to see if it starts and stops. Yes, it does. So if you look right here, you can see that it fades off. And that's perfect because then when you when you actually go to make this attached to a bolt, um, it should work properly. So let's go ahead and solidify, or not solidify this, but kind of confirm that by clicking away. And then I'm gonna add another one real quick. And then instead of nut, I'm gonna choose bolt. And I'm assuming these two go together. So now I'm gonna click away, and I'm just gonna take a look here in x-ray mode with both of these selected. And it looks like they match up. Yeah, because if you click on this now, check this out guys. If you click on this, this matches up perfectly with that bolt. So as long as I kept those two settings for the actual like thread part of it, it looks like it kept it fine. 
Um, wow, this is so cool. And it's pretty accurate. Let's go ahead and get out of x-ray mode. And I want to shade this auto smooth. It looks pretty good. You know what's weird? And I don't know if this is the just the weird geometry up here. But it does seem to do something kind of weird around this little cap part. And I'm not sure if that's an error with the add-on or what. But the geometry looks very strange here. Um, so if anybody knows any fix to that, let me know. But other than that, I mean, everything else looks really good. This looks good. Uh, let's shade that auto smooth. And again, it's just really cool because I'm, I'm wondering if I go ahead and insert a keyframe here for the location and rotation. And then, I, excuse me, I head to frame 60. And I move this up here. And then maybe rotate it on the z-axis like a bunch of times like this. And insert that keyframe. Let's go ahead and play this back. See, now we have this animation where the bolt is heading up this screw. That looks good. Now, you'd have to, of course, refine the amount of rotations. Like, there's probably more rotations than that. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. Now, you could probably eyeball this, or you could probably calculate it. I'm really not sure how you would calculate it. But that, that actually looked pretty good right there. And then, you know, if I wanted to take it maybe just one step further, I'm just going to save this real quick as screw um, bolt. I don't know. And then I'll save that. Um, I'm just going to set up a quick scene here. I'm going to snap to my camera. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to do 1080 by 1920. And I'm going to make an orthographic perspective and zoom way out. I'm also going to, like, distance myself from the scene a lot. That looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and back my camera up like that. That looks really good. Um, and then I'm probably just going to add in a floor plane and some like basic materials here. Uh, add mesh plane, scale that up. That looks good. Um, I'm going to head over to cycles, GPU. I'm just going to add a little environment texture in here. Something like this. Perfect. And then I'm just going to add in like a dark background plane. And I'll make this like metallic, metallic with like a lower roughness. And I'm just going to copy that material. Oops. There we go. And there you go. And now we have this cool little bolt animation. Now this is really, really cool and fun. But you know, you can take it a step further by adding more materials um, that are like a little bit more realistic with more scratches on them. Obviously, I can make this like almost solid chrome. And that does look pretty good. But yeah, I just wanted to mess around with this and see kind of like what we could come up with here. And I think it looks really nice. You could also just not have the plane at all. You know, you could have just the, the background if you wanted to. I just think this looks really, really cool. And if you wanted to, you could kind of enable your motion blur here. It looks awesome. I'm curious if we just mess with this material just a little bit more. <laughs> you can get this to look really interesting. You could also make it a little bit more gray low roughness that looks so cool um and then i'm actually just going to switch out the hdri because i want to show you guys something if you were to choose a different hdri like this one you're going to get a completely different result because the lighting is going to drastically change depending on your you know your environment there so i just want to point that out to you guys because i think a lot of people don't think about they don't think about those things when they're creating this their scenes um now we are in an orthographic perspective so automatically it's going to be it's going to be a little different but as you guys can see, the bolt is going to look different based on the lighting around it. This is like more of an outdoor scene, so it's going to be a little bit different there too. But this looks really cool. I kind of want to see if the motion blur is working, so I'm just going to do 100 samples for my render. We'll do optics denoising, and then let's just go ahead and render this and see what it looks like. Yep, okay, so the bolt is in motion, and that motion blur is working correctly. So there you go, guys. That's how you make a bolt in Blender with the bolt add-on. I believe it's called Add Mesh Bolt, something like that. So you guys can search for, just search for bolt, and you'll find it. Enable it, and you will be able to customize your own bolts and screws and, and different nuts and add-ons, or add-ons, added meshes, excuse me. So like right here, make sure your settings are both the same. And then go ahead and animate this thing to move up and down, rotate it, move it around. Um, this could be really, really cool, especially if you're creating some kind of product animation 
where you want the product to kind of come together with different screws. Now, if you talk to your client and ask them exactly the different dimensions of the screws they're using, more than likely they're probably using a metric screw for something a little bit more advanced and they're probably gonna be able to tell you the exact type of screw they're using. Um, usually it's like M5, M6, like M something. It'll be like M, which is metric, and then whatever the size will be. Usually it's like something in millimeters. So um, hopefully you can actually get those exact dimensions and things like that and actually make the screw accurate because like right now I think this screw is 5.5 .5 meters high so obviously that's not very realistic especially when it comes to like enabling depth of field is if I did enable the depth of field right now and I focused on the nut you can see it it is kind of working but again when you actually go and you make a a render with the actual size of the object it's going to look completely different so I just wanted to kind of go over this, have some fun with this. Um, it's really cool. Again, not sure how to fix this weird geometry up here, but um, as far as I'm concerned, you can create pretty much any bolt or nut from this and pair them together to create kind of like a fun mechanical animation. So I don't know, this was really fun. Uh, I'll just try one more HDRI, see if I can get a different result here. Again, completely different result based on your surrounding environment. So. Yeah, guys, have fun with it. Let me know what you end up coming up with. Um, this is like just this was just like a fun way to kind of go over this, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this, got some value out of it. I've never seen this add-on until this morning, so I just had to kind of go over it real quick. Um, again, you're gonna have to experiment with it to get the exact product that you want here, but it does seem to work really well when you when you carry the same settings through both the nut and the bolt. Um, and then again, you can choose whatever head you like as well. So this is really awesome. And I thought this was really, really fun to go over. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next tutorial.